بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أحبت في الله continuing on in our study of an intro of an, a basic introduction to Qawaid Fiqiya we reach the uh, Qawaid Arabia the fourth Qaida uh, or fourth principle that from amongst the principles Qawaid uh, al kulliya al kubra from the major Qawaid uh, effect principles and this principle is the principle la darar wa la dirar o a darar yuzal this principle is the principle of there is no harm and there is no reciprocating harm or it's also known as a darar yuzal that harm or harmfulness is removed or harm is removed and before we get into some of the evidence and there is so much in the shutter that shows us the importance of avoiding harmfulness and that's why we have for example the tahrim of so many things that are harmful for us and let's just look at uh, two examples that come to mind. For, for one, the harm of mukhadarat drugs and the harm of alcohol, which we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly uh, prohibits fi kitabi al kareem in the Quran. And when we look to all the harm, for, especially those of us uh, who've had experiences with drugs and are aware uh, in our communities of the harms of drugs, we see that, for example, alcoholism, uh, often accompanied by alcoholism, is uh, family abuse, uh, maybe a loss of employment or lack of employment, uh, violence, many other type of things uh, and harmful things result from um a khaba'ith from the mother of evils, and that is uh, alcohol. And likewise is the harm of, for example, uh, uh, zina or adultery, that there are many harms. We don't usually think of a lot of those things as harmful, especially those of us with a background in the West we often say, hey, you're not hurting anyone else. And in fact, having a boyfriend or a girlfriend, it is something you enjoy, something that you know, maybe you find uh, love and you experience affection. You experience all of these things which you think are uh, beneficial. But you'll find also with that is there is a lack of, uh, by committing, for example, zina, it is a taking away of your honor. And for those who have children, they can understand this even more so that for those, for example, who've raised girls and they've done their best to make, uh, to provide for their girls and give them a, a righteous environment and raise them up on istiqama, the blow of having losing your girl to something as simple as a boyfriend, how much harm and discord that causes in your family because it does become a thing of honor and it becomes a thing of you know you did everything you thought to protect them and and to shelter them in, in a sense from what is known to be muharram ma'lum min adin bi which is known by necessity to be muharram in the religion and you know the harms that result from that so if you have a 15 year old girl and she has a boyfriend now, some families, they take that very lightly. But when she comes home pregnant, out of wedlock, then they begin to really see the consequences of that. And so there is harm. There is harm not only for her, not only for her family, but then on top of that, the, new, the newly born, uh, the, the child to be born, that now this child 
may grow up without that father in the life, without the father in the home. Maybe this perhaps, and, and all the facade that comes with that. And on top of that, then perhaps the, uh, the couple doesn't stay together, they're not married, all the other facade that results from that. Then, in addition to that, there's the, the harm to the woman and that maybe it's diff it becomes difficult for her to perhaps get married, especially if she had this child out of wedlock and she is now, uh, and she comes from a, a Muslim family. Then there's a stigma attached to that everywhere in the world, regardless of whether that's in the West, but it's more so in Muslim countries, in, fa in uh, countries where those values are, uh, Play, that there's a lot of emphasis placed upon those values. So that's why the shara, we see that qa'ida being practiced, uh, that la darar wa la dirar, that the shara, that Allah Azza wa Jal and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, have prohibited harming and reciprocating harm. And what's very important to also look at is uh, we're, we're going to look at one of the most important uh, evidences for this qaida or this principle because this principle and the qaida that we mentioned la darar wa la dirar is the actual lev of the hadith it's the actual statement of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam qala sallallahu alaihi wasallam la darar wa la dirar no harm and no reciprocating harm so no harming means all kind of harm, that anything which is harmful, that uh, you should do your best to avoid that and, and not be a source of that harm. dirar and no reciprocating harm means that if someone harms you or, so, um, or so, some other means to entice you to become a harmful and oppressive person, that you should refrain from that. La darar wa la dirar. There's no harm and there's no reciprocating harm. So it shows us that the shara is concerned, or the part of the maqsad, and the intent is to prohibit and avoid harm. And there are countless, countless uh, examples of this in the shara. One of the ways in which a person can cause harm, uh, which is an example which il uh, of an illustration of this qaida, la dara wa la dirar, is in the example of uh, talaq, of divorce. And that when a woman is in her waiting period and the husband and wife are living together, that the husband should either take her back or uh, take her back in kindness, or divorce her, and ha you know, have the divorce be permanent, but in, uh, with kindness. That this should be not a source of harming her physically, mentally, or spiritually, but rather righteousness is always encouraged in the shara. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fi kitab al-kareem, with a nisa'a, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al Kareem in Surah Al Baqarah in verse 231, He subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And if you divorce uh, the women and she has, uh, you know, reached, you know, it's within the idda, and it's within the, the idda, and it's uh, within the, the, the waiting period, then either take her back in kindness or free her in kindness and do not keep her with harm. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the term diraran, do not keep them in harm. Uh, in order to transgress. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has let us know that the bounds of the shara keep, should keep us 
from refraining from harming others. And that's just one of the many examples uh, in the Shara of the encouragement to do righteous and have righteous conduct and be about islah and rectification instead of harming others. La dara wa la dirar. As we mentioned in the beginning of this uh, dars, that these are the qawaid al kulliya. These are the general qawaid al kulliya al kubra. These are the major uh, fiqh principles which are comprehensive and that are agreed upon by the ulama, the fuqaha. And with regards to that, we also mentioned that each one of these qawaid, each one of these uh, principles, that they have qawaid tandaraj tahtuhum. Uh, or the, uh, each one of these principles, they have other principles which fall under them. So that's why these are the Qawaid al Kubra. That means that there's other furu, there's other uh, branches or other principles which come under them. And under this, there's also another Qaeda which is very important for us to uh, talk about. And there's still there's still so many we could. Uh, could go into, but we, we, for the sake of keeping this uh, as a precise uh, as possible uh, series of l short lessons, uh, we're unable to 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 uh, go into depth. But one of the kawaid or one of the principles which falls under la dara wa la dirar under this kaida is the kaida, which is a kaida fariya like a, 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 a branch principle or subsidiary principle is ad-darar yadfa bi qadra imkan. So this principle under the main principle we we're talking about is that uh, harm should be removed as much as possible. So that's a, a separate principle which fits under that that main qaida we're talking about. And the meaning of this means that as much as possible that you're able to remove something harmful, you should do so. And that can be in two, one of two ways. One of the ways is uh, as much as you're able to. The second way is bil, bil kulia, okay? Obviously, the bil kulia, meaning in totality removing a harm, is what is uh, what is the maqsad or what is the intent of the shara. But if you are unable to do so, then as much as possible. And this brings up the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which also gives us um, some insight into this and also, in, in fact, is in, in evidence for removing harm as much as possible. This is a, a, a nasrih. In the hadith of Abi Sa'id al-Khudri, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, qal, sami'tu Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam yaqul, من راى منكم منكر فليغيره بيد فان لم يستطع فبلسانه فان لم يستطع فبقلبه وذلك عرف الايمان رواه مسلم uh, in the hadith of Abi Sa'id al-Khudri رضي الله عنه he said i heard the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam saying that whoever sees a munkar then change it with his hand and if he is unable to do so then change it with his tongue. And if he is unable to do so, then change it with his heart, and that's the weakest fourth of Iman, uh, weakest form of Iman. And this is in uh, Sahih Muslim. So here we see that the Prophet وسلم, was talking, uh, mentioning, and which we also gain from this hadith, is that Iman is, uh, part of Iman is uh, actions of the limbs 
and part of Iman is the statement of the tongue, and part of Iman, and which is the asal of Iman, is in the heart. You know, it's your itaqad, it's your belief. And so, all of that makes up faith. And removing the munkar is removing what? It's removing the harm. Whoever is able to remove a munkar, something sinful. And sinfulness is harm. Of course, it's dara. So, here we see al-darar, we see the uh, implementation of that qa'idah in that hadith, or that qa'idah uh, is illustrated in that hadith, مَنْ رَأَ مِنْكُمْ مُنْكَرٍ فَلْيَغَيْرُهُ بِيَدْ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ so who, uh, And if you're unable to do so, then to the next level of removing the munkar. And that goes back to the qa'idah, which al-darar uh, yadfa bi qadra imkan that harm is removed uh, to the extent of one's ability. And that fits perfectly right in, in accordance with that hadith. Also, uh, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that one of the weakest forms of Iman is removing a harm from the road. So that also shows that, that that's from Iman and removing something al fi tariq fi tariq that removing something from the road is uh, something from the road which is harmful. This is from Iman, and this is also an illustration of that uh, that qaida that you're removing the harm as much as possible. So it shows us that the shara is very much part of the the maqsad is as we're going to see from some of the statements of the ulama shortly is to remove harm, remove harm as much as a person is. Able. And there are countless uh, examples and countless ways in which uh, a person can remove uh, harm. One of the ways in which this qaida, this principle, is illustrated, uh, is an, an example for this qaida, is, for example, in relation to da'wah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in calling people to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, in that the da'i and the, uh, the scholars and the, du and the du'at and the students of knowledge, of course, if they're giving da'wah, those people concerned with da'wah and calling other people and raising up other people, and raising their communities and spreading the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that they are removing a harm from the people. And how is that? That's because a jahl or ignorance is harmful. Ignorance of your deen especially is harmful. This is especially harmful. And this is why we try to encourage the Muslim not everyone's going to be a serious student of knowledge or reach a certain level necessarily, but everyone should try to know some basics about their religion. They should worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ala ilm wa fiqh wa basira. They should have some insight. They should have some knowledge and understanding of how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and why they're worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this comes from Talib al it comes from studying. So the, the da'i, the one who is teaching the people, he is removing the harm and the mafsada, the harmfulness, uh, which is an obligation to remove. And Ibn al-Qayyim, he said in regards to this, أَنَّ جَهْلْ أَصْلَ كُلُّ فَسَادْ وَكُلُّ ضَرَرْ يَلْحَقَ الْعَبْدِ فِي دُنْيَاهُ وَأُخْرَاهُ فَهُوَ نَتِيجَ نَتِيجَ تُو جَهَلْ uh, Ibn al-Qayyum, he said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, and he said this in uh, his book, Miftah Dara Sa'ada, he said that uh, ignorance is the asl, it's the foundation of every kind of wickedness. And every harm, every harm that comes to a servant, 
in this life or in the next, its end result is ignorance. So it shows us that we need to remove ignorance from ourselves and from others, and that can only come through Talib al Ilm. So that shows us that uh, seeking knowledge, especially seeking knowledge with the intent to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the intent to remove jahil from yourself and from others, that this is in accordance with the maqsad shari and this is in accordance with that qaida of removing a darar yazal bil imkan o a darar uh, yazal okay that that uh, harm should be removed you know in it in as much as possible as we mentioned it could be kulia in entirety or it can be at least as much as possible that a person is uh, able to to do so in order to worship Allah Azza wa Jal. And we know there's many uh, examples where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the harm of ignorance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ فَلَا تُكُنَّنَّ مِنَ الْجَاهِنِينَ And do not be of the ignorant ones. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, في كتاب الكريم قال أعوذ بالله أن أكون من الجاهلين And he said, I seek refuge in Allah from being of the jahilin. And so it lets us know that remaining ignorant is not a, uh, is not something good for us. Okay, remaining ignorant is only harmful, and as Ibn al-Qayyim said, it is the natija, or it is the result of every type of wickedness. Or, in fact, it can be the cause that uh, ignorance leads to uh, to the various ways of, of, of sharm, the different ways of evil, and the different ways of harm. Because if you don't know what is halal, and you don't want, know what is haram, then, of course, the chances that you're going to fall into the Muharramat, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, uh, you know, you will fall into the Shubahat, the doubtful matters, and you will then fall into the Haram. Another example of this Qaida is, for example, when someone is involved in Dawah, or, you know, in a position and they avoid taking revenge even if, for example, someone is speaking about you. So, for example, look at how much fitna we have amongst some of the du'at. Some of the people who call the callers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or some of them are the callers to themselves that all they do is busy with other people. Okay? And when they're busy with others, then that causes others to be busy with them. Okay? So part of the fiqh of da'wah and part of a way to practice this qaida is avoiding that harm and defending yourself. Sometimes there's more maslaha, there's more benefit in just being silent and even not defending yourself. You have the right but sometimes there may be a, a greater harm by doing so. And that brings up a whole other uh, qaida of looking at a khafa dararain, which is also under this principle, looking at the lesser of the two evils. There's the evil of allowing them to continue to uh, speak ill of you and backbite you. I'm talking about when people are dealing with you unjustly. And then there is the harm of speaking about them in response. Okay, and the, and the harm and, and the busying the people with that. So you have to look at the masada and the mufasid, the, the harms and the benefits, and weigh which is more uh, beneficial. Taqdeem, uh, the maslaha ala mafsada. So you are uh, giving preference to the, that which is beneficial over that which is uh, harmful. And so all of that, that takes fiqh fi deen, and that's also... Uh, falls under this qaida. And in relation to this, that when it comes to the boundaries of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet didn't take revenge 
for himself. But when it came to the boundaries of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is what angered the Prophet sallallahu and this is what uh, he would act upon that and implement the punishments and so on and so forth that are legislated by Allah Azza wa Jal uh, in order to follow the tariqa, uh, the tariqa al mashru the sharia or legislated path. And so an example would be in the hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in which Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha said, مَا ضَرَبَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ شَيْءٍ قَتْ فَيَنْتَقَمْ مِنْ صَاحِبَهُ مِنْ صَاحِبِهِ إِلَّا أَنْ يَنْتَهَكَ شَيْءٍ مِنْ مُحَرْمِ اللَّهِ فَيَنْتَقَمْ لِلَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ The uh, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not uh, harm or, uh, you know, punish any uh, for anything that was personal for him except when someone did something from the uh, prohibitions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they transgressed the prohibitions of Allah so then he would take revenge for Allah azza wa jal meaning he would implement the shar the hadud or whatever the sharia based uh, punishments Another last example of this guide that we can look at, uh, and that is Mujahid uh, Nafs an Ittibal Hawa o Istirsal Fihi. And a last example of this, or uh, example or illustration of this guide, would be in prohibiting. Uh, you know, one prohibiting and fighting against their own sinful desires and following their desires. And Ibn al-Qayyum said in regards to this, he said that ittiba al-hawa asla kullu kullu shar wa fitna wa bala wa nasa shatabi ala enna al مقصد الشرعي من وضع الشرعية إخراج المكلف عن داعية الهوى حتى يكون عبد لله اختيار كما هو عبد لله اضطرار. So Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned that following the desires is the origin of all evil and uh, fitna you know, and, and tests and and discord. And Imam Ashatabi Rahimullah Ta'ala mentioned, he said that the main intent, Sharia intent or Sharia uh, a purpose within the, the, the Shara is that the Sharia has uh, given the person who is uh, responsible for practice, practicing the shara, a means for defending themselves against their wicked desires. Until they become a servant of a law by choice. Similar to the way they are servant a uh, servant of Allah by force. So that's a very beautiful statement by Imam Ashatabi, which is ta talking about the maqasid ashar. It's talking about the one of the intents, the main purposes, uh, the main purposes and ways in which the Sharia defends a person and helps a person defend themselves against their own wicked and vain desires, and that. Uh, this is in order to make them a better servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by choice, similar to the way that they're a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by force. So it's it's by choice and by force. And, and, and the one who is truly, uh, obviously, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and has true love for Allah, then they're worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala based upon their choice, as well as staying away from those boundaries 
because there is force as well, because they will be punished. They know they'll be punished, perhaps in this life, as well as the hereafter. So this shows that this is an, uh, a maqsad, or a purpose of the shirr. It is to defend oneself against their desires, which also falls under uh, the harming of oneself. In that those sins and that wickedness and following your vain desires, they have a, uh, they are also a source of causing harm to oneself. And as the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "La dara wa la dirar." There is no harm and no reciprocating harm. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Wa sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Ala Nabiina Muhammad wa ala alihi wasallam.